As a freelancer, you will sooner or later be confronted with the situation that your client does not pay. Of course, I don't wish for you to be in such a situation, but the experience will happen sooner or later. And in this video, we will take a look at what you can do about it. At the beginning, perhaps just a few basic tips. You should have all the terms for a project thoroughly documented in some way, in a clear and concise manner. You don't necessarily need a lengthy contract every time. This means that you really don't need to create a separate contract for every single order. However, you should at least have the key details noted down in an email in bullet points. An important point to consider is indeed the payment terms. If you don't have that, it will become incredibly difficult later to refer to anything. And I have done hundreds, probably thousands of accounting tasks in my life. And I have very often seen that clients and contractors quite frequently end up not being in agreement about what is actually to be paid for and how quickly. And to avoid this, you need a written agreement beforehand. There is also an important point regarding payment terms. I have seen quite a bit of this, especially among entrepreneurs, where I thought to myself, that this is honestly very, very unusual in normal business transactions. I have often seen payment deadlines of five days and on the sixth day there is already a nervous inquiry about where the money is and on the seventh day the reminder arrives. Here perhaps is a brief overview of how the invoicing process works in large companies. Sometimes I feel that not everyone really knows this. It is very common in companies that when an invoice comes in, it typically must be approved at least twice. And specifically, I would say technically, formally, certainly all the information is included. That means the accounting department first checks whether this is a proper invoice that we want to process. And once the accounting department has approved the invoice, it then goes to the budget holder, the person responsible for the budget, who reviews the invoice to ensure that it is correct. They check whether the billed amount matches what was agreed upon and whether it is in the correct amount and so on. And then it can of course happen that additional people review it. But generally, in companies, at least two people look over such an invoice. And then many companies have fixed days on which transfers take place, for example, always on Mondays. This means that an invoice must be approved by both parties by Friday in order for it to be included in the payment run on Monday. Then the actual transfer can also take another one or two days. It depends on how this company processes these transfers. However, it can happen that the payment run, if it takes place on a Monday, is actually processed only on Tuesday. So the money will only be with you on Wednesday or Thursday. We can see that the topic of invoices can be quite a large project in companies and the invoice initially takes a long path through the organization. If you write a payment term of 21 days on your invoices now, follow up on the sixth day and send a reminder on the seventh day, it may actually be the case that the company hasn't even had a chance to process the invoice yet. And to be honest, you create more chaos when you send the reminder just seven days after issuing the invoice. Therefore, the correct payment term is very important and absolutely crucial. Typically, it usually ranges from 14 to your 30 days. That means if you write a payment term of 14 days on your invoice, in my opinion, that is the minimum that is reasonable for companies. 30 days is honestly the normal standard. That means payable within 30 days and then you will receive your money within 30 days. In fact, it can also happen that invoices are paid even later by large companies. But you should discuss that beforehand. I can still remember a personal case when I was a student and working part-time as a freelancer and a rather large company. I think you could call it a corporation, paid me only after nine months. And this invoice was so high that it was about half of my annual income. And that of course caused me huge problems. That's why I can tell you from personal experience that you should discuss this beforehand. If you really have to check your account every day for eight months to see if you have been paid by this company, it can be quite uncomfortable. But now let's take a closer look step by step at what you can actually do when your invoice is overdue. So let's assume you have written an invoice and you have a 30 day payment term on it. 
What do you do on the 31st day? Personally, I would say that on the 1st and 30th day, you shouldn't do anything at all. But if the invoice is overdue by three, four or five days, meaning about a week, then you might want to kindly follow up because it can always happen that your invoice ended up in the spam folder or that it got stuck somewhere with a clerk who needs to approve this invoice. Maybe he is sick, maybe on vacation. You don't know what happened with that invoice. And that's why the first thing I would recommend is to simply ask politely. Just send an email or make a quick call and simply ask about the invoice. I wanted to check if it got lost somewhere. What can help is if you do everything in writing, for example, via email and simply remind them of the invoice in a friendly manner. Because the problem with conversations, phone calls, WhatsApp messages, etc., it is often the case that they cannot be forwarded. Very often in companies, the invoice is really stuck somewhere. When you write an email, it can be forwarded internally to the accounting department and then someone will take care of it. If you have spoken to someone on the phone, it is relatively difficult to forward that conversation. Therefore, I would suggest that about three, four or five days after the invoice is overdue, you should follow up in writing. In 2021, you should definitely remain friendly. If your client does not respond to this friendly email or responds but still does not pay, then about a week later, the first reminder will be due. In this reminder, you should actually include reminder fees. And how high these reminder fees can be is actually regulated by law, specifically in the Administrative Enforcement Act. It is stipulated that the reminder fee should be half a percent of the invoice amount, but at least five and a maximum of 150. So let's stick with the example. You send a reminder for your invoice. Half a percent of five is 0 0.25. That means you simply add a $5 late fee to this invoice. This means the amount you should receive now is However, if the invoice amount is due, you can also charge a reminder fee of 50. Regarding reminders, here's a very important note. Theoretically, you can also calculate default interest. However, this is usually relatively complex and in my opinion, not worth the effort, unless the invoice amount is really high, like in my case. Half a year's income is coming eight months late. Honestly, I could have charged interest on that. And then you usually have several stages of reminders. That means a second, third reminder, or however you want to put it. I wouldn't send too many reminders. Sometimes I see there are like five stages of reminders, which is completely unnecessary. Someone who has not paid after three reminders, which honestly include an invoice, a payment statement, a reminder, and three reminders, will probably not respond even after the fourth reminder. Therefore, I generally speaking recommend a maximum of three reminders or usually two reminders. And an important note, at this point, just a practical request, please do not number these reminders. Because when you send a reminder and it says first reminder in the subject line, what does that imply? Yes, there is definitely at least a second one. Otherwise, this first reminder wouldn't make any sense. And in fact, I have met some people who said no. If someone sends me a reminder and it says first reminder on it, then I will wait until it says final reminder. That's why you definitely shouldn't number your reminders. This can actually lead to clients being less willing to pay you. Let's assume you have issued an invoice, sent a payment reminder, and then after a week or two, sent two or three reminders and the client still hasn't paid. What do you do then? Then you can of course hire a collection agency. Collection agencies do exactly that. They buy the claim from you, for example, you get 80% or 90% and they then try to get that money somehow. So you have your money, albeit a little less, but at least you have that money secured. You can also hire a lawyer who will ensure that you get this money somehow. However, I would actually suggest a completely different approach that is more cost effective and not many people are aware of, specifically the judicial dunning procedure. You can actually initiate a court dunning procedure online. I will link the website where you can do this below in the video description. And a court dunning procedure ensures that your customer receives an official letter from a court in order to settle the matter. That means the whole situation seems quite serious. And I can tell you that if a company is your client, they will start to take action at the latest when they receive a letter from a court. 
But there is another advantage of the judicial dunning procedure, namely that the statute of limitations is halted. Monetary claims actually expire after three years. This means that when you write an invoice and you are being delayed, the invoice is not paid. And yes, someone is just stalling for time and eventually you simply lose your patience. That's why you only send a reminder every two, three or four months and continue to be kept waiting. After three years, the whole matter is indeed time barred and you have no legal options left to recover your money. However, if you have initiated a court dunning procedure, then this claim does not expire after three years. In my experience, the first reaction when I mention the topic of legal dunning procedures is often, oh God court, that's complicated and expensive and I don't dare to do that. But it's quite simple. You can do it online and it's inexpensive. There is a calculator that shows how much it can cost. I'll link that for you below in the video description. You can enter the value of the invoice and this calculator will tell you how much it will cost in total. For example, it costs $16.30. This is usually cheaper than a lawyer or a collection agency and honestly the effect is often much stronger. This reminder notice is also delivered quickly. If you apply for it online, it takes 7 to 14 days. And then this reminder notice is actually with the customer. In most cases, payment is made relatively quickly. If your client still does not pay, it is common for the reminder notice from the court to automatically become an enforcement order. And this enforcement order is then actually sent to the bailiff. The bailiff ensures that the money is collected. This means that they will go to your client and collect the money and possibly seize something in order to recover this debt so that you receive your payment. And you can obtain this service from the court for relatively little money. Therefore, my personal recommendation would be to initiate a court dunning procedure directly after the respective reminder stages. However, there is also an alternative to this entire process. So if you want nothing to do with it at all, and just want to receive your money quickly and reliably, you can look for factoring companies. Factoring companies essentially take over your invoices and usually pay you immediately. Usually not the full invoice amount, but a few percent less. And then the factoring company takes care of everything. That means the reminders, the dunning stages and so on. You simply have nothing to do with it. This means you sell your claims to another company and that other company is then responsible for them. Honestly, such things may be interesting for large companies. There are also occasional offers that specialize in solo freelancers or self-employed individuals. My personal experience is the whole thing is atypical and is not necessary in most cases. As I said, I have done hundreds, thousands of accounting tasks in my life. And while it does happen from time to time that invoices are paid late, it is not systematic or sustainable for them to always be late. This is very, very unusual and the money that one would typically have to pay to the factoring companies is usually not worth it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about invoicing and reminder stages, etc. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment under this video. And what is incredibly important in this whole process is that you always have an overview of your invoices, your expenses and your account transactions. Otherwise, you won't know which client might be late or not. And there are some smart, nice tools that I can recommend for that. You can find my recommendations below in the video description and I will also link them for you here. Or you can simply take a look at the other videos on this channel first, for example, this one or this one.